got my little converted power tow easy 40 power tow 40 easy whatever their exact part on is but um converted to electric 450 watt geared motor underneath from electricscooterparts.com uh, it was up on the side over here where the original transmission was but um because i'm using lighter batteries it was off balance so i slung it underneath um, and it lines up fine with the with the uh existing pulley or not pulley gear um, the nice thing i was able to find a motor that used number 41 chain so converting it to electric was pretty painless i'll um do a build video later but uh here we have we just hit the power so that shows me my full power and i'm going to use pull i labeled it push and pull so that was easy to understand in the field high is way too fast so I'm, i may have to re do the wiring to get the medium here high is way too fast so low and uh we're just gonna hit the throttle a little bit very easy you can hear the pop 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 I think I need to align the uh, axle a little bit um, just to make sure that chain is perfectly aligned. But it, uh, I'm gonna push. And I'm just baby in the throttle because I'm one-handed here. But uh, it moves it no problem. And that's, I, I bought the conversion arms. So it's an old, old style power tow. So I had to drill to fit those arms, but those are the current generation of uh, Cessna arms to get up over the um, straight tails nose gear with uh, wheel pants. So thanks to a very nice person on Facebook, I have this donor Power Tow EZ40 or Power Tow Model 40 EZ uh, by Power Tow as a donor vehicle to turn into an electric uh, plane tugger. Um, I'm not against the gas. A friend of mine has two of them, two power tows. Um, it's just every piece of rubber on that engine, as this is an older model, is dry routed. And I took a peek in the carb, the carb is a mess. So, and replacement engines are about the same as um, the electric parts that I was ordering. Maybe a little bit less expensive, but I wanted to go electric. So, I'm gonna get start the tear down and get this changeover moving. So it took about, I don't know, 25, maybe 30 minutes tops to, uh, to disassemble it to this point. Got the engine off, transmission off, all the drive equipment's off, obviously the handle's off, switches are the pulleys, levers, blah, blah, blah. Um, now to give it a good clean and uh, start the new build. Had to buy a new tire. 13 and a half, uh, six by, or 13, six by six and a half by six um, from Home Depot, you can order online, free delivery. The old tire was dry rotted and cracked out. So got the frame all cleaned up, had to buy a new chain because the old chain, I could not revitalize it. So thankfully this is just number 41 chain. So that's $4 a foot, pretty inexpensive and a new uh, master link. So I've got to get the interior of the rim painted I had to clean off all the rust and then I treated it. Now I'm ready to just give it a coat of uh, a top coat of paint in there, replace the valve stem and get this um, get this new tire mounted. The uh, just like the tire, the valve stem was dry rotted out. So better to replace it and get it ready for new. Um, did get the motor mounted, got the chain cut to length, but I'm leaving the chain off so I can easily move the. Uh, whole unit back and forth um i got this u10 size plastic battery box today from amazon and these two um let's see them mighty max batteries these are 7.2 amp hour 12 volt batteries uh, i would have liked an f2 connector but the f1 connector is okay the f1 is just a little bit narrower but these two batteries fit in there nicely, and there's plenty of headroom above it. So I can mount my controller in the top of the battery box. I'm just getting ready to zip tie some of the wires out of the way that I'm not using, like the brake and the tail light. The charger lead I'll leave out, um, and there's a speed selector lead that I'm going to use just to go from high to low 
this speed controller can do that. It's pretty cool. And then the reverse, the black and white, you close that and that's reversing. So you don't have to do the uh, dual pole, dual throw switch to reverse the brushed motor. It's built right in the controller. Um, my throttle has a battery level indicator. So that just goes into this red lead is the battery level. So that's just plugged into the positive side. I just throw the heat shrink around to protect it. And then the throttle connector and the power switch connector, what they call a key switch on the, on the uh, controller side. But uh, so these are female spade piggyback connectors. Well, this is one, uh, particularly this is a number 10 to 12 size. What that lets me do is set up for dual 12 volt float chargers because the charger sets up an independent circuit on the downside you can run two 12 volt chargers even though the batteries are connected in a pair in series 24 volt um, so the black marks the negative of this charger and the negative of this charger so to them they don't care about this other circuit they're just worried about this circuit so i didn't want to cut and tap and splice blah 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 so i just wanted these connectors i ended up buying a stupid set of them so that lets you do that. Now I can leave these, even though you see this LED is on, that just means the polarities collect. These, these are the um, Centec item 69955 from Harbor Freight, just the most inexpensive float there is. I use them on my motorcycles, chart tractors, everything else. They work fine. Uh, these are not gel cells. Uh, these are just strictly for lead acid batteries. So these are just little lead acids. Anyways, so I can leave these plugged in. Um, and up at the hangar, then uh, I'll just plug this into the wall and leave this connected on the, uh, on the airplane tug. So everything will sit there. And there's the power to the controller. So obviously making a lot more progress. I'm just about done. Hopefully I'll throw the chain on and get a chance to try it tonight. Um, one thing that uh, one thing I had to buy was this. Um, sorry for the cluttered shop. Um, were, were these arms? This arm kit from uh, the Power Toe folks, and it's very nicely machined. It comes ready for the spring. Um, if you do buy these on an older older model, set up the drilling pattern differently than their directions. The directions it must be different with the newer models but it caught here so what i had to do was put two washers just as a little extra spacer to clear the uh, uh, original mount tube um, if i would have drilled it back an eighth inch probably would have been fine but um these uh the front weldments have a lot of flashing on the inside and this side won't fit this side i i was able to shove through and wiggle around and got in there this side I'm going to have to file to fit. So just something to be aware of if you buy the arm kit from Power Toe. Um, earlier we said it was very well machined, it was great. What actually helped me on this part of the process is aligning the pins once you get everything together. And if you recall, I said I had to put two washers in to raise it up. So what I had to do was just take one washer out of the back bolt to pivot it and bring this arm up so that when I pull the lever, it lines up. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, uh, my son helped me. It was a bit of a wrestle, arm wrestle, but with a little soap and water, we were able to pop the uh, tire onto the rim. Got the new uh, valve stem put in there. Um, the frame was just wire. I used a wire wheel and a drill. Remember, if you're using a wire wheel, use a drill, not a die grinder. Wire wheels are not made for high RPM and it will go in your eye. So there's my soapbox. Um, anyway, everything was just wire wheeled off. Before that, I used acetone to clean the 40 years of grease and grime off. Um, I did reheat, used a torch, reheated their feet and just banged it out and rebent it into a new shape. I bought these, um, ca they're not really a caster, it's a rigid caster from Harbor Freight. Thus far, they're holding up, holding up pretty good just with tension. If I have to, I'll slip a star washer in between these two and retension it. But uh, this is just to tip it up and move it quicker because of the gearing. Um, 
Let's walk around here real quick, look at the motor. You'll notice the motor has moved. When I picked it up, it was extremely off balance because I put the motor where the old gearbox was. And it lined up great, got it all bolted up, but when I lifted it up into what would have been like a driving position, it was just far off weighted to the right. And I couldn't figure out how to get it right. So what I ended up doing was, so this is a 450 watt geared motor from electricscooterparts.com. I'll put links and everything and the number 41 chain. The gear, I did swap the gear out from a 10 tooth, which it comes with, to a 9 tooth. Um, I think the original was a 7, and I think this is 48. The big gear is 48. Um, so I wanted to get as close to the mass ratio as I could, so I dropped the tooth on this pinion. It was only a couple bucks. Really easy to do. Then this control is the stock hookup control. So if you can see up there against the planes, whatever, you can see the left arm moving. So it's it goes over center and it locks down once you have it tensioned on. Um, and I need to fine tune that on the plane itself. The, um, so the reason these wires are all loose is because the, um, the original one did not work. The throttle didn't work. So I contacted Electric Scooter Parts customer service. They had me do some basic tests, take some pictures, we figured out it was a bad part. They field, they tested, bench tested the new part, had it expedited to me. They were really great. I can't say enough good things about electricscooterparts.com. That's a dangerous site for a tinkerer. There's so much cool stuff there. So I'll just bundle these up along here with um, some zip ties.